Brought to you by wikivd.com The Afghan Whigs The Afghan Whigs are an American rock band from Cincinnati, Ohio, United States. Originally active from 1986 to 2001, they have since reformed. The group with core members Greg Dully, Rick McCollum, and John Curley rose up around the grunge movement, evolving from a garage band in the vein of the replacements to incorporate more R&B and soul influences into their sound and image. After releasing their first album independently in 1988, the band signed to the Seattle-based label Sub Pop. They released their major label debut and fourth album, Gentlemen, in 1993. Pitchfork described them as one of the few old bands to flourish on a major label in the 1990s. Dully frequently claimed in interviews that the band would never get back together following their dissolution in 2001, but the group announced in December 2011 that they would reunite. Early Years and Big Top Halloween 1986-1988 Greg Dully, Rick McCollum, John Curley, and Steve Earle formed the band in Cincinnati late in 1986. The Afghan Whigs had evolved out of Dulles' previous band, the Black Republicans, a band that Curley later joined. Curley would introduce Dully to McCollum, a frequent jam partner who was famed on the local Cincinnati scene for his innovative use of effects pedals. McCollum and Dully would bond over their shared love of R&B. And in fact the first song the Afghan Whigs ever rehearsed was a cover of The Temptations' Psychedelic Shack. Dully later described the intent behind the Afghan Whigs was to exist as a cross between the band, The Temptations, and Neil Young playing with Crazy Horse. In the wake of the Black Republicans' breakup, Dully had decamped to Arizona, where he composed half the material for what would become Afghan Whig's debut album Big Top Halloween. Self-released on the band's own Ultra Suede label, we were running through what were basically the first songs I'd ever written in order to do some demos, so we were playing really loose, Dully recalls. And then all of a sudden, I found out John was having covers made. While only a thousand copies of Big Top Halloween would be pressed initially, one of them managed to capture the attention of Jonathan Poneman, the co-founder of influential Seattle-based indie label Sub Pop, which signed Afghan Wigs in 1989. Initially, Sub Pop planned for the Wigs to only release a one-off single, but that soon led to a full-blown record contract with the label. Signing to Sub Pop and Up in it 1989-1990. Upon signing to Sub Pop, the Afghan Whigs became the second non-Northwestern U.S. band to record for the Sub Pop label. In 1990, Sub Pop put out Afghan Whigs' second album Up in It, largely recorded by Nirvana producer Jack Endino and featuring the college radio hit, Retarded, Up In It received a favorable reception with music critics upon release. To support the album's release, Afghan Wigs went on a package tour with grunge originators Mud Honey and Boston underground band Bullet La Volta Up In It was followed by a limited edition single released by number six records under the name Ornament, which included vocals by scroll singer Marcy Mays. Congregation and Uptown Avondale, 1992 With the 1992 album Congregation and a cover ZP, Uptown Avondale, the band intentionally evolved what would become their signature sound, blending soul with psychedelic sprawl and punk abandon. Critics noted the combination of Stax and Motown influences with indie rock sonics on the band's own material.
Uptown Avondale featured covers of hits by soul acts such as the Supremes. Videos for notable congregation songs like Conjure Me and Turn on the Water would receive airplay on MTV, which began to regularly cover the Afghan Wigs as a new band to watch. Afghan Wigs would also tour extensively during this period, including a U.S. jaunt with Scottish indie rockers Teenage Fan Club. Signing to Electra and Gentlemen, 1993. Building on the buzz that welcomed Congregation, the Afghan Wigs soon signed to a major label. Electra Records, following a bidding war that resulted in a contract so lucrative. It featured a clause that allowed for the funding of a dully scripted feature film that ultimately was never made. For their major label debut, the Afghan Wigs ensconced themselves in Ardent Studios in Memphis, where big star Bob Dylan, Led Zeppelin, and ZZ Top had recorded. The result of those sessions was the 1993 album Gentleman. Gentleman received positive reviews from the likes of Rolling Stone. Critics would go on to praise it for its unflinching, self-flagellating lyrics and a decisive stylistic break, with the grunge style epitomized by Nirvana and Mud Honey. Gentleman would place at number 17 on the Village Voices, Paz and Jop, critics poll for 1993. Gentleman proved to be the Afghan Whig's most commercially successful release. The singles, Debonair, and Gentleman, received regular airplay on MTV and college radio. Another album track, Fountain and Fairfax, also appeared on the television series My So Called Life in 1994. The lead vocals on My Curse were sung not by Dully, but female singer Marcy Mays of Scrawl allegedly, because the lyrics documenting the violent dissolution of a relationship were so personal. Dully couldn't sing it. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by wikivd.com. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.